Whenever I had training sessions here at the Billiard Sport Academy, there was one question that I was asked so many times. The question was, how does spin work? How can I apply spin and play with spin? What are the spin basics? What are the advantages and disadvantages? I don't know, for some reason, it seems to be a magical topic. Everybody's interested in that. I believe spin can be a friend, but also your enemy. So let's talk basics first, people. Basics first. So let's start with the wording first. Two words you've probably heard spin in English. Uh, English is, a lot of players use that actually. And when you talk about English, it, you really mean left and right English on the cue ball. When you talk about spin, spin can be anything. You've probably heard that in other sports as well. You can also have top and bottom spin, which means follow and draw shot. Because the word spin basically means rotate, twist, right? So that means every kind of spin. Uh, and not just left and right, but of course most of the time when you talk about spin, you actually mean left and right side spin. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> when you hit the ball with right spin, hit it on the right, and therefore the ball will rotate like this. When you hit it on the left side, hit it left, and the ball will rotate like this. And the same happens with follow and back. You hit on the top and the ball will rotate like this. And if you hit on the bottom, the ball will rotate like this. And remember when it comes to left and right spin, when you play a draw shot, the side changes. So when you play low left, it will go to the right after the rail. And when you play low right, it will go to the left after the rail. When you start playing with spin, I would suggest the Jim Rampy training ball because it will just help you focus on where to actually hit the cue ball. Um, and maybe you have heard players talk about it as tip size. You know, they're like going out one tip size on the right or half a tip size on the left. So that term will definitely help you. So think of have and fold tip size. And whenever you are trying out the spin with your equipment, start at the center and then always move have a tip size to the right or have a tip size to the left, just to see what happens. And then learn from the results. So now three terms that will make everything complicated. Deflection, swerve and throw. So I'm gonna try and now explain it as simply as I can. But let's keep it simple, people. Deflection is the first term. Deflection basically means that you're throwing the cue ball off of its original path. Which means in this case, if I would play the straight shot, the cue ball would go straight onto the 11 ball. If I play this ball, for example, with right spin, I would push the cue ball in this direction. So instead of this path, all of a sudden the path of the cue ball would be this. So I'm hitting it on the right, and that's why I push it to the left. The same happens on the other side. If I play with left spin, I will push the cue ball to the right. The swerve is the curved path of the cue ball. So whenever you apply side spin to the cue ball, you will make the cue ball rotate. And because of this rotation, the cue ball will not go straight, it will have a curved path, and that's the swerve. And don't forget, the more you elevate your cue, the more swerve you also create. There's a certain type of shot, we call it banana. <laughs> you curve the cue ball around another object ball, and therefore you need to really elevate the cue in order to create that swerve. So always keep that in mind. Here I'm playing a straight shot with left spin and normal speed. And you can clearly see the deflection and the swerve. And because of that, I am missing the object ball to the left. Now I'm playing the exact same shot again, playing with left spin but a lot of less speed. So now you can see that the swerve is much bigger and all of a sudden I am missing the object ball to the right. So remember, less speed means more swerve. This time I'm going to play this ball with left spin and a lot of speed. And in this case, the swerve is much smaller. So now I'm actually potting the ball. Still a little bit to the left because of the deflection, 
So remember, more speed means less swerve. So when you're playing with spin, you can't aim straight because you have to compensate for the deflection and the swerve. So how much you need to pivot depends a lot on your equipment. And throw means that because of the side spin on the cue ball, you're actually throwing the object ball of its course, of its natural path. Oh, and uh, since deflection, swerve and throw is not enough yet, when it comes to throw, there is also spin-induced throw and cut-induced throw. I know, you probably hate me by now, right? <laughs> okay, let's go through it really quickly. Oh. Don't sit on a pool table, people. <laughs> spin-induced throw means that the spin of the cue ball will throw the object ball off its course. It's gonna push the object ball a little bit either to the left or to the right. Cut-induced throw happens when you play angle shots. And the thicker you hit the object ball, the more throw you create. Look at this situation. You would think that the 8 ball is impossible to pot. And when I take the 11 ball and put it there, you can clearly see that the line is pointing towards the left corner of the pocket. But when I play the shot with a lot of left spin, I can push the 8 ball a little bit to the right, and that's just enough to pot the ball. And to confuse you even more, I have two more terms for you. Natural spin and reverse spin. Whenever you play a shot, just normal, you hit the cue ball center, there will always be a natural path of where the cue ball would go. When you, for example, apply natural spin, that type of spin will support the cue ball in this direction, in this natural path. Reverse spin will kind of hold up the cue ball from its original path, from its natural path. But now the question is, what is it important for? It's really important for your position play because the big, big difference between natural and reverse spin is what it does with the speed of the cue ball. Natural spin will automatically increase the speed of the cue ball and reverse spin will automatically decrease the speed of the cue ball. So when you have shots where you know you need a lot of speed, natural spin will help you get out of the situation while when you play a shot with reverse spin, you have to understand beforehand that you will need to apply more speed because the reverse spin is gonna take it out a little bit. I got two more terms for you, and I think they're really important for you to know, especially when we talk about spin. And that's front-hand English and backhand English. Using front-hand English and backhand English are basically methods to apply spin. And I actually think it's a pretty good method, especially for beginners and for players who are not that experienced yet um, when they're playing with spin. I think the word pretty much says it. Front-hand English means that your front hand, when you're going down on the shot, moves to the right or to the left. And with backhand English, it's not the front hand, the front hand stands still. With backhand English, the backhand moves to the right or to the left. But what's really important to know, and you really have to be careful with that, the distance of the bridge hand really matters with this method. It makes all the difference. Here you can clearly see that when your bridge hand distance is shorter, the pivot is much bigger than when your bridge hand distance is longer. So always be aware of that. And now, the summary. Let's pull it all together, real easy. That's it with the basics, people. I'm for sure going to record another video about spin because the topic is way too big. Uh, but I hope these uh, basics help you a little bit to understand how spin works. So go to your table, take your stuff, take your equipment and try it out yourself. So have fun practicing, have fun playing with spin and I talk to you soon.